Hello, and thanks for tuning in to this Marvell Follow the Wire video for our OEM customers and their partners. In this segment, we're going to expand on our last video where we explained the basics of storage networking, and now we're going to compare the two most used interconnects for storage networking, Ethernet and Fiber Channel. Let's get started. Whenever there's a choice, that means there's a difference that needs to be understood. Now, for storage networking, this usually applies to choosing between Ethernet or fiber channel transports. Now, the data structure is the first thing that will dictate the connectivity option. If the data structure is object or file-based storage data, then Ethernet is the choice. That's because fiber channel only supports block storage. However, if block storage is in play, then there is a choice between fiber channel and Ethernet. And this is where we're going to focus for this video. Let's start by looking at some of the good aspects in choosing Ethernet for storage networking in block storage applications. Ethernet's widely used in the data center, and it's well known to the IT staff. As mentioned on the prior slide, Ethernet can support object, file, or block storage formats. Ethernet also supports high bandwidth, including 25 gig, 100 gig, and even up to 400 gigabits per second per connection. For low latency applications, remote direct memory access, or RDMA, can be implemented on Ethernet to offload the I.O. processing and provide very low I.O. latencies. You know, that all sounds good, but let's look at some of the challenges as well. First and foremost is security. Ethernet is IP-based, and thus precautions need to be taken in order to keep it secure. Ethernet is a general purpose protocol, and it's not really optimized for storage. Additional software and utilities are often required to optimize Ethernet for storage connectivity, and these require additional CPU resources and add to the management complexity and can limit the scalability of the solution. Configuring Ethernet-based storage environments can be complex, as there's no auto device discovery like there is with Fiber Channel. Vendors have created additional software to provide this functionality, but this requires additional servers or virtual machines to run on, and that takes up resources, again, not required by Fiber Channel. And Ethernet was once considered to be very cost-effective, but as bandwidths get higher, it's not nearly what it used to be. The higher the bandwidth, the more expensive Ethernet becomes. Some Ethernet transceivers can cost more than the NIC adapters or even Fiber Channel HPAs. Another challenge is that Ethernet switches are fixed port designs, meaning that you potentially pay for ports that you're never going to use. There's no offload in Ethernet unless RDMA is used, and without offload, software initiators are used for iSCSI and NVMe over TCP. As I mentioned earlier, this consumes CPU resources that offload I.O. technologies like Fiber Channel do not consume. If offload is enabled with RDMA, this adds to the network complexity and scalability is limited to typically one or two hops, which limits the ability to support growing environments. Let's look at some of the challenges with Fiber Channel as well. Fiber Channel only supports block storage. If you need object or file-based storage, then Fiber Channel simply won't work and you have to use Ethernet. Now, if you go with Fiber Channel, there is going to be a separate network for your IT team to support. This includes managing the network using tools that may be initially foreign to your IT staff, and so there's a learning curve. And let's be honest, not a lot of colleges and universities are teaching about Fiber Channel these days. That's a good reason for videos like this one. Now, Fiber Channel is also perceived to be high cost because it always required I.O. transceivers and fiber optic cables for connectivity. However, high-performance Ethernet, and by that I mean 25 gigabits per second and above, require the same type of optics and fiber cables, thus leveling the playing field from an acquisition cost perspective. Fiber Channel does have lots of advantages for storage connectivity, however. First and foremost, Fiber Channel was designed for only one thing, connecting servers to shared storage disk arrays, delivering the best combination of performance, scalability, security, and reliability. Fiber Channel delivers high performance with bandwidth available today up to 64 gigabits per second 
and 128 gigabit per second fiber channel on the roadmap. Fiber channel networks also deliver millions of IOPS, or input-output processes per second. Fiber channel delivers low latency by design. Fiber channel adapters utilize hardware offload and direct memory access, which reduces the latency for I.O. operations and reduces host CPU utilization at the same time. Standard Ethernet requires software initiators, as I mentioned, for both iSCSI and NVMe over TCP. These initiators chew up CPU and memory resources in the host that are not required when using Fiber Channel. Fiber Channel is secure. The fact that Fiber Channel SAN is a separate network from the corporate network means it's isolated and less susceptible to cyber attacks. Cisco and Brocade designed their entry-level Fiber Channel switches with a pay-as-you-grow approach, allowing ports to be licensed and, and activated as your environments get bigger. You only pay for what you need. A really cool feature in Fiber Channel SANS is name server technology that's included in every Fiber Channel switch. This provides instant visibility or auto discovery to all devices in the SAN and makes configuring and managing a Fiber Channel network very easy. There are also new standards that Fiber Channel HPAs and switches adhere to that provide things like automated congestion control and simplified diagnostics. So to sum it up, when the data is the business in your customer's mission-critical environment, then that means Fiber Channel for server-to-storage connectivity. It's purpose-built for storage connectivity and provides the best combination of performance, scalability, security, and reliability for your customers. And because Fiber Channel SANs are now so trivial to build and manage, the TCO is very attractive as well. When it comes to host connectivity, there are two main suppliers for Fiber Channel HPAs. And as I said in the beginning, when there's choice, you need to choose wisely. And the wise choice for HPAs in servers is QLogic. Unique features like port isolated design make QLogic HPAs ultra reliable. Marvell's unique store fabric features deliver SAN congestion automation, enhance diagnostics, and deliver more value to your customers. And lastly, QLogic HPAs from Marvell are optimized for virtual server environments with the unique ability to auto-negotiate support for VMID and support for virtual lane technology. These technologies help virtualize the per-port traffic and track SAN performance at the VM level. Here's the portfolio of fiber channel adapters from QLogic. The QLE 2690 series are our 16 gigabit fiber channel HPAs, and the QLE 2770 series is the enhanced 32 gig or second generation 32 gig fiber channel HPAs. And the latest in the portfolio is the QLE 2870 series, which are our first generation 64 gig fiber channel HPAs. All of these support the variety of features listed at the bottom of this slide, and all these features work with both Brocade and Cisco fiber channel SAN switches and directors. Well, that's it for this session of Follow the Wire. For more information on Marvell QLogic fiber channel technology, go to www.marvell.com slash QLogic. Or you can access information about Marvell technology at our OEM partners using the OEM specific microsites shown here. For Dell, it's www.marvell.com slash Dell. For HPE, it's www.marvell.com slash HPE. And for Lenovo, it's www.marvell.com slash Lenovo. Thank you for your time and attention today, and I hope you learned something new about fiber channel technology. Be sure to check out our other Follow the Wire videos on the Marvell YouTube channel. If you have questions, email us at oemcustomerqueries at marvell.com. Thanks, and have yourself a wonderful rest of your day.